I'm Michael A. Caligiuri. I'm the president of the AACR for the 2017-2018 year. I'm also the CEO of the James Cancer Hospital and Soloff Research Institute and the director of the Comprehensive Cancer Center at Ohio State University. I was in medical school in the late 70s. At that time, there were four or five drugs available for most all cancers. Today, we all know someone living successfully with cancer or cured of cancer. So if you just think about it in 30, 35 years time, what we've been able to do. So in my lifetime, I've seen a transformation of the disease from you know just barely willing to mention the word cancer to now facing it head on with all sorts of therapies, targeted drug therapies and immune therapy. Very, very exciting time. Basic science is required for the understanding and the cures of cancer. I mean, for so many years, when I was a medical student, a resident, a fellow, and even as a practicing clinician and academician, a lot of what we did was empiric because we didn't yet understand how the cell normally works at a very fundamental basic level and what happens when it loses control of growth, when it invades tumors, when it acquires blood vessels. As we've learned those things, notice the plethora of drugs that have appeared on the marketplace targeting things like angiogenesis, immune evasion, and look at the responses we have in things like brain tumors and lung cancers and colon cancer where we were never seeing these kinds of responses. So fundamental discovery is at the heart of it all. Just as you need to understand how an engine works to fix a car, you really need to understand how a cell works. So it's very, very important that we continue to fuel basic science. Cancer is many, many, many diseases, even within one organ type, say colon cancer or lung or breast or prostate. There are tens and tens and tens of causes for each of those. So to get small groups of patients that are identical so we really can test therapies on cancers that are molecularly identical, we need large numbers of patients. So I think big data and the collection and accumulation of big data such as AACR's Genie will really hold a lot of keys and a lot of breakthroughs, truly transformational. A lot of incremental advances, you know, with chemotherapy and targeted therapy and immune therapy, collecting and storing big data with outcomes as well will really open the key for a much more rapid development of very, very targeted and specific therapies. One of the hallmarks of cancer health disparities is that different people of different racial backgrounds have different outcomes. We do know that it's multifactorial, that it's not only socioeconomic status, and it's not only genetic factors and behavioral factors, but it's a combination of those in some way, shape, or form, probably different for different populations. In the very simplest sense, in a socioeconomic sense, if I don't have transportation to my clinic after, as a woman, I've had, say, a mastectomy and radiation therapy, if I don't get my chemotherapy within six weeks, my mortality goes up. So if I can't get a babysitter, if I can't get transportation, um, if I don't have the money to afford the care, it gets delayed, and that leads to higher and higher rates of mortality in certain cancers. So that's a simple example of how there's really disparate outcomes based on one's access to the system. And that's, that's assuming you have insurance to get the care. Just simple things like childcare coverage, transportation, you know, just dollars and cents that can really change your outcome. That's one of many examples as to why there are barriers for all people getting equal care. I've been doing cancer research for 27 years when you look at virtually all of the advances that are being made in cancer research, simply said, we can't do it alone. And with inflation, we're actually getting about 75 cents on every dollar that's provided versus the dollar 15 years ago. So in fact, while it stays flat, we have less buying power. If I am a successfully funded cancer researcher and there's only so much money in the pot, then as new people come into the field, there isn't additional money to see to it that they get funded. So really four to five percent a year consistently from our congressional representatives would be far more important and a much greater investment in the young, creative and exciting minds that are out there looking to join the fight against cancer.